Today we're talking about oil, a commodity that recently became cheaper than hand sanitizer. Now there are two problems hitting the oil industry right now. First, a complete lack of demand, which pushed prices down. And second, a completely muddled meeting that somehow ended up with countries producing more oil than normal, driving prices even lower. Soon the barrel might be the most expensive part. So let me tell you the story of how exactly we got here. Starting last Thursday, when OPEC leaders got together for a meeting in the back room's back room to discuss how to cut oil supply across the board in order to keep prices up. Turns out China, the largest importer of oil, wasn't ordering the amount they normally do. Something about quarantining more than 50 million people wasn't conducive to driving. Similarly, despite the fact that everybody feels like they need a vacation right now, nobody was booking cruises, the petri dishes of the sea, or flights, the petri dishes of the sky. I guess being locked in a recycled air tube with a bunch of strangers for a few hours wasn't appealing during a looming pandemic. Quick life hack, cough twice and you get both armrests. So people aren't buying oil like they used to. What are we going to do about this? Well, give them less oil. Iran's oil minister confirming earlier reports that OPEC ministers have agreed to an extra one and a half million barrels a day cut in oil production. OPEC ministers also want non-OPEC states to contribute reductions of 500,000 barrels a day to hit that cut. So last Thursday, OPEC met and agreed to massive cuts in oil production. Great! Wow, this was a short episode. The latest crash, though, is the result of a failed agreement between the OPEC oil cartel and its ally Russia. A deal to implement new production cuts fell apart over the weekend, leading the Saudis to slash prices while ramping up production, sparking fears of an all-out price war in crude. It's like convening a meeting to sign a peace treaty and ending up starting World War III. This meeting ended with everybody doing the literal exact opposite of what they set out to accomplish. Now this brings us to the core problem, because we find ourselves in a classic case of prisoner's dilemma. If everybody cooperates and cuts production, well then everybody's going to be selling less at a higher price. Yay, everybody wins, except the consumers across the world. But what if everybody else cuts production to keep the prices up, but you boost production so you're selling a lot of oil at a higher price? Well, you're definitely sitting pretty in that case. Of course, the problem here is everyone immediately sees you profiting off of their cuts and says, well, we're not keeping the price up so that this other country can make a quick buck. I'm going to make as much oil as I possibly can to benefit from this price while I still can. Next thing you know, you have oil prices so low you'd have to democratize the entire Middle East for similar results. We're talking a 30% drop in price, the largest since 1991. So who was the first to defect? The Saudis' decision was in retaliation for Russia's refusal on Friday to join OPEC countries and a cut in production in response to the coronavirus outbreak, which has slowed demand for oil. Russia? Of course, this leads to the obvious question, why? I mean, the cause and effect here is so obvious, and with this price war, Russia is losing $100 million every day. Now, a phrase that popped up in every article I read on this issue is, no one but the Russian government knows exactly why they refuse to extend the production agreement. The theory that comes up most is that they're either doing this to spite or join America. You see, ever since the shale revolution, America has become the largest producer of oil and is preparing to export more oil than Saudi Arabia soon. And the only people our oil companies answer to are investors. America's private oil companies have been huge beneficiaries of state-owned oil companies working together through OPEC to create a false scarcity that we can fill. So thank you OPEC for literally subsidizing our shale revolution. From Russia's point of view, all this strategy was doing was propping up US oil producers at the expense of everyone else. While it still made financial sense to prop up prices, man, that would annoy the heck out of me too. So this brings us to today, and another phrase I keep hearing, price war. What does that mean? 
Grab your price guns, everyone, and let's storm St. Petersburg. Beep, beep, beep. The market turmoil began when Saudi Arabia, the world's largest oil exporter, started a price war by announcing plans to boost production. So, what's a price war? Well, think of OPEC's goal of stabilizing prices, and then think of literally the exact opposite of that plan. This new strategy is a competition between Saudi Arabia and Russia, seeing who can sell the most oil at the lowest prices, eating away at the other country's market share, and eventually trying to put the other country's oil industry out of business. Boy, that escalated quickly. Even though prices are low, individual oil producers have an incentive to pump more oil, hoping that higher volumes will help offset the lower prices. But when all big producers try to pump their way out of lower prices, it makes things worse for everyone. If you're making less money per barrel sold, well then you can either sell more barrels of oil or start a GoFundMe page and hope for the best. Of course, remember, demand is currently falling, so everybody's competing for a larger slice of a shrinking pie. This is gonna get ugly, especially for bystander nations. A major drop in oil prices would hurt producers around the world, particularly Venezuela and Iran, whose oil economies are already under pressure from American sanctions. Man, those guys could not catch a break. This of course leads to the question, how do you win a price war? Are we in a game of chicken, if we are to use a game theory parlance here, where uh, Saudi's cut, uh, OSPs and Russia's are maybe not, a Russia's not maybe able to, to contend with a lower oil price? Buckle up, because we're in a game of chicken now. On one side, we have Russia, who currently isn't an OPEC member, looking to compete with OPEC for sales on the free market, just like America does now. On the other side, we have Saudi Arabia and OPEC members, who are looking to drive the price of oil so low that Russia will be forced back in line, because they can't afford to continue selling oil at such a loss. Remember, Russia is currently a pretty oily country, and those sales make up a not small portion of their state's revenue. Start chipping away at those numbers, and you might not have a Russian revolution, but you're definitely going to have Russian devolution. OPEC tried this exact same strategy against America a few years ago. This was reported in 2014. The demand and tumbling prices is seen by some as a deliberate move to send rival producers to the wall. Reports say many shale companies are defaulting on their loans because the oil price has plunged below break-even point. One analyst said the Saudi-led policy of pump, pump, pump was aimed at squeezing Russian and American shale drillers out of the market. Yes, back then Saudi Arabia tried to bring America back into the fold with a strategy of pump, pump, pump to temporarily drive down prices and put shale companies out of business. They basically told us, America, if you want prices to recover, why don't you cut some of your production? We're not cutting ours. After two years of price fighting, starting in 2014 and ending in 2016, Saudi Arabia finally blinked. As The Economist reports, exactly two years after Saudi Arabia coaxed its fellow OPEC members into letting market forces set the oil price, it has performed a nifty half pirouette. Wow, pretentious word choice there, Economist. On November 30th, it led members of the oil producers cartel in a pledge to remove 1.2 million barrels a day from global oil production. Yes, America told OPEC to go frack themselves. Because we shirked off OPEC during that two year period, when Saudi Arabia sends an all email to cut oil supply, we're not on that list. We just keep pumping it out independently as an OPEC competitor. Russia's sitting there supporting the oil price to help American companies and thinking to themselves, what are we doing? We should be at full production as well. Sure, we might at first lose money. But if we can hold strong, we can be an OPEC competitor along with America. An unfortunate or fortunate, depending on your opinion of fracking, side effect of this Russia fight with Saudi Arabia is, it has de facto reignited the fight with American shale. Some of the biggest losers from the debacle in Vienna are undoubtedly US shale oil producers, which generally need oil prices above $50 a barrel to make any money 
and which were ironically hoping their OPEC rivals would make production cuts that would keep shale's head above water. So that's exactly what's going on with the oil price right now. If you don't work in the oil industry, well, enjoy the low pump prices and reduce shipping costs. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! First I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.